So a couple days ago, I posted a photograph of a bike I had just fixed up. It was this 1995 Trek 930. And I was shocked to see how many people liked that bike and how many people shared their own pictures of a Trek 930. I think there's a lot of bikes out there that bring back memories of the 90s. And this double-butted chromoly frame was certainly one of those. So for anyone who's owned a Trek 930, this build is just for you. From 20 feet away, this bike looks great. But up close, you can tell that the seals are shot on the fork and that the tires are starting to crack and show signs of age. So in my last video, I showed you how I restored the Judy Hydrocoil fork and repainted the lowers to bring it up to speed. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link below. It's hard to believe, but this bike is now over 25 years old. But apparently, these parts are now worth some money. Now don't get me wrong, this 7-speed STX Grupo still ships and works great. But I'm after something a little more modern, something a little more trail friendly, something that will bring this bike up to 2021. Just a little buying tip. For everyone trying to find a vintage frame and hoping to find something that's not been abused, a good sign is finding something with a kickstand still on it. Most trail riders would have taken that thing off first thing. Another sign of light use is looking at the brake pads. If there's very little wear on the pads or scoring marks on the rims, there's a good chance the bike hasn't been ridden that much. So my favorite part of building up a bike is starting with just the frame, cleaning it up and inspecting all the openings to make sure there's no corrosion. And this bike at 26 years old, the only signs of rust were near the bottom of the bottom bracket and these water bottle cage mounts. As I mentioned in a previous video, there is a great product called Frame Savers, which you can spray inside the tubes to help stop corrosion. This bike really didn't need it. But if you ever come across the steel frame that you're thinking, man, this thing probably only has a few years left, it's a great product I recommend. So for the first major update, we're going to be changing out the drivetrain to a 1x11 setup. Here I'm reusing a early 2000s Bontrager Isis crank set with a true weight of gigapipe bottom bracket. Those of you who've lived through that time of 10 or 20 different bottom bracket changes during the 2000s will appreciate that a lot of manufacturers were trying different things with different amounts of success. So an interesting bit of history when the Truvade of Gigapipe bottom bracket came out, it was one of the first to incorporate three large sealed cartridge bearings and a splined shaft. And while it did work great for its time, things have certainly shifted towards larger external bearings. How many of you remember wishing you could afford a Chris King headset? This is hilarious to me because this is the first time I've ever gotten one, and it came off of a used bike I got for 200 bucks. 
to me, a headset's always been kind of a utilitarian thing. It's cool to have it match your bike frame, and you want it to be smooth, but the idea of spending that kind of money on a headset has always eluded me. But I gotta tell you, after I installed this on this old steel frame, I have never seen cups slide in so smoothly and stop so perfectly. The original lower race that came with this headset was so beat up and marred because someone had taken it off with a screwdriver. And yet, with a little bit of buffing, I was surprised at how buttery smooth everything still turned. For the first time in my life, I'm a believer in Chris King headsets. Now onto the fork. This 1999 Judy Hydra coil was rebuilt, but is not the original Quadra fork that came on the bike. So when putting on a longer fork, we now have four inches of travel instead of two and a half. This will change the geometry of the bike and the steering quite a bit. It'll be more slack, but not so much to affect the steering. Okay, who remembers ordering parts from a magazine catalog? Bike Nash Bar, Mountain Bike Action. In the early days of riser bars and setback seat posts, brand names like Titec, Race Face, and Icon ruled the day. So the question I always get after I fix up an old bike is how does it ride? And how does it compare to a modern trail bike? Well, this old steel frame still climbs like a billy goat. And with a modern geometry, descending and climbing feels fresher than ever. The shifting's great, and these old Avid V-brakes still rock. And the thing I have to go back to is, it's been 25 years since I started mountain biking. And anytime I get on a bike, it is a blast. I may be getting older, but it's still a rush every time I ride. Thanks for joining me on this ride, and we'll see you next time.